Well, hello, I'm Leonardo, a civil engineer. This is a continuation of a series of videos on uh, fluid mechanics, particularly the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, on this video on, and on the next ones, I'll talk about uh, some more analytical solutions for Navier-Stokes. Uh, in the, some previous video, I talked about a particular solution which is known as the hydrostatic the fundamental equation of hydrostatics, in which case we take uh, a u velocity vector equal to zero, and then we obtain uh, the fundamental equation of hydrostatics. Okay, so I'll start uh, now with the analytical solutions, which include the velocity and the Navier-Stokes equation. So for this particular case uh, we talk about the Kuwait flow it is flow configuration which is given by this you have a thin uh, let's say thin parallel plates in which case we have uh, some distance here between these plates these walls okay so uh, it goes if they are infinitely long in length, so it goes continues to here and to the left side and the right side. Okay. So here between these walls we have a fluid with constant density and dynamic viscosity. And this wall here is kept is kept uh, with no velocity, it is stand still and this wall here moves to the right side or it could be either left or right but here this plate moves with constant velocity u o okay so we have our Cartesian mesh here, it is the y direction, and here it is the x direction. Here it is our reference Cartesian frame. Okay, so what will happen is the fluid at this point must have zero velocity because, as you recall from the boundary conditions. At this point, the fluid has the same velocity as the wall, and here, the same velocity as this wall, okay? So, if you look at the velocity profile, we have something like this, at this point. Here, it is the maximum flow velocity, which will be, of course, u0, u0, right? and here will be equal to zero. Uh, there can be two types of Kuwait flow. Uh, in this video we will work with the steady case, in which there are no variations in time of the velocity, and no pressure gradient. So in the x direction, the pressure gradient, in this case, the derivative of p in respect to x will be equal to zero. In the next video, we'll talk about how the pressure gradient can change the velocity distribution for the Navier-Stokes solution. In this case, the solution of the Navier-Stokes equation will be straightforward. As you can see right here, it will be a linear profile. Sorry, a linear profile. So, our solution will have... Uh, will be given by straight line okay so we have to determine which are the a and b coefficients on this case uh, interpolating using linear interpolation you can see that b will be equal to zero and a will be equal to u o divided by h which case this is the length of separation between these two walls but we will prove it from 
beginning from the Navier Stokes equation. So we'll start as always from Navier Stokes equation in its full form, including the continuity equation, of course, which uh, states that mass is conserved, and of course, here for the incompressed case. Right, so we expand this three equations in Cartesian coordinates in x, y, and z. Okay, so we will now make some assumptions in order to simplify these uh, four sets of equations. As you can see, uh, we arrive at one in one equation for the x direction. So our first assumption is that we have a one-dimensional flow and no turbulence. It, uh, we have we made assumption that is a laminar flow. So in this case, the v component of velocity and the w component will be equal to zero. So all these terms here vanishes. They are equal to zero. And we'll make assumption that there are no pressure gradients in y and z. And if they there are pressure gradients, they are not. Uh, relevant for this case. So these two terms here also vanishes. So this term here in the x direction vanishes. And this term here because v is 0 and w is 0. So we are left only with these terms here. Okay. This term here from the continuity equation as you can see as this term is 0 and this is 0. Of course if the velocity, the v and w component of velocity are zero, their derivatives are also zero. So from the continuity equation, if we substitute this here, we obtain that the derivative of u in respect to x is zero. So this linear, nonlinear term here also vanishes, and what we are left, okay, so if the first derivative is zero, the second derivative is also zero. So this term here in the viscous term vanishes as well. And what we are left is this equation here. Uh, we only have to do some uh, other steps. But as you can see you, here, you can already recognize this as a heat equation, a parabolic type equation. So you have a first order derivative of a function of a function which is a two-dimensional function which depends on sorry here a three-dimensional function which depends on the time and x uh, sorry y and z components so here is our second order term and here is a first order term so this is typically a heat equation with a source term given by the pressure gradient okay so we'll make another assumption is that the flow does not vary along the z direction it is symmetrical among the z direction which in this case here it will be your lies let's say our spun wise direction which is the z so this flow goes the stuff is no variation along the z direction okay so by this assumption, our derivative in respect to z is zero. So what we are left now is we go from the two-dimensional heat equation to a one-dimensional heat equation. Okay. So this is the transient heat equation. We have this transient term here and a source term for pressure. Okay which is given by this equation here. So in this video I'll talk about the steady state flow. So this derivative vanishes as there are no variations in time of the u component of velocity. So this term here vanishes and we arrive at this equation here. So as you can see now by now, uh, our u component of velocity is no longer uh, a function of x, y, z, and time. It's only a function of y. 
so it goes from the partial derivative to a total derivative okay the same as with the pressure gradient so if we consider no pressure gradients this term here vanishes and we are left with this term so as the dynamic viscosity cannot be zero we can divide this both the left hand side and the right hand side by uh, the dynamic viscosity and what we are left is this simple differential equation here which is pretty straightforward and easy to solve so let's take some steps back uh, we made a lot of simplifications in the nowadays stones we go from uh, four equations and nonlinear partial differential equations okay to uh, ordinary differential equation and linear a linear ordinary differential equation ordinary differential equation because we only have uh, one independent variable variable in this case y and our function which we want to determine to solve for is u so for this particular solution of Navier stokes equation we have a velocity profile along the y direction which will be this linear function here okay so our boundary conditions as i said before is the no slip boundary condition in the bottom of in the wall at the bottom and we have both our Dirichlet type boundary condition and then for y equals h which is our length of this gap between these two walls uh, is equal to this velocity which is u o u z or u zero okay so if you have some basic uh, knowledge in ordinary differential equations we can all solve this by separation of variables so this uh, infinitesimal here goes to the right hand side and we integrate this equation two times and we of course obtain a linear function which is a line so as we integrated this equation two times we obtain two constants here c1 and c2 and by applying the boundary conditions as I stated before, the two Dirichlet type boundary conditions. We obtain that C2 is equal to 0, C1 is equal to this o, U O divided by H, as, as you can see here, right? So, which is exactly the tangent of this angle here, okay? so it will be the cosine and divided by the sine of this angle which is h divided by u o right so our solution for this particular problem is this line here okay so this is our, this is our solution for another stokes equation a very simple solution indeed, but it is considered a solution of the Navier Stokes equation. Uh, from this, we can calculate the shear stress along the fluid. So we take the derivative, as we don't have the V component, this term is zero, vanishes. And we only take the derivative of this function, of course, it is the tangent, is the tangent of this line and multiply by dynamic viscosity we obtain then the shear stress in the x y direction okay so let's say we would like to know the shear stress along this wall here so we'll have to integrate the shear stress along the area of this wall let's say it goes for this direction here this will be our area and the force due to viscosity here will be the integral of the shear stress in this area 
okay? So this particular profile uh, appears, this particular solution of the Navier-Stokes appears in the lubrification theory. So if you're studying lubrification of uh, machines and mechanisms, you will certainly face this type of solution of the Navier-Stokes equation. Uh, in this case, the Kuwait flow. It is named Kuwait flow, this type of velocity profile. And finally, uh, from the solution, we can calculate the flow rate, right? So we only have to integrate this velocity profile along this area here. Let's say here it's h, and this direction in the z direction we have uh, b, okay? So the air will be h, b. If you don't know, uh, what, uh, if you can determine B, you can calculate the flow rate per uh, length units, right? So we integrate this equation from 0 to H, and as B is considered constant, it goes out of the integral, and now we have to integrate this function in respect to Y. And after some algebra, we obtain the flow rate. Okay? Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave your comments and, of course, your feedback. Thank you.